what we call in the second category, second category called the National Cultural Congress, because we organize two kinds of congress, international as well as national. Um, the international congress is participated by many folklorists from all over the world, many from South Asia especially, but one, someone from uh, India is okay. participating, presenting the paper. I have not seen me. Is he coming? Uh, so this time also there is one participant from uh, awesome. India awesome. and uh, His Excellency the Ambassador of India, uh, which is a great country that has promoted folklore studies and we are very fami familiar more than one way. In the past also we have cooperated with the uh, Finnish Embassy and their sensitivity and their understanding and their great educational and humanitarian gesture about this matter of pride for us. He is present here. So in, in a sense, this, this is an international conference. Also. Mm -hmm. The national conference, we call it national conference because um, most of the paper writers uh, come from different parts of the country and then the subject they tackle. Even in international conferences, they tackle the uh, national subject, local subject, mm -hmm. because for more sticks always promotes the net local studies because for more is the name of local studies um, so this time uh, we are hoping to achieve much more than we did before because every time we start we start with that conviction that this time we are going to achieve more as you can see from the size of the room also because the rooms are not available society like the folk or society are kind of sandwich between the concept of uh, capital capitalism and the concept of power. We are sandwiched. So there's a story of folkloristic history <coughs> even in the sandwich stage. That is how folklore is happening. That is how folklore is happening. In this state of being sandwiched, our message, Professor Kulsinivas has been uh, saying this and Professor Bandu has been uh, stressing that our message should be one of regeneration. Regeneration, working for the life of this health of the society, health of the culture. So the I didn't want to take much of your time. This is I'm, I'm just supposed to welcome you all. Um, the overall uh, the papers that we have put in the bags, as you can see this abstracts are very diverse, very interesting papers from the local to the from the part of the very to the uh, this is outside, they address in time and distance. The one important feature of the papers this time is that they address subjects which are remote in time, remote in geography, very close in geography, and close in time. So this is a combination of all these two factors. So this is a very unique combination of, of the papers. With these three words, I'd like to welcome you all to this which is what we consider as the most important folklore congress because this is happening in the kind of sandwich situation with greater vigor. If you understand what I mean, with these words, I would like to put you to one side. Uh, Chief Guest, um, Mr. Chossi, good to meet you. Um, Professor Kulasi Divasa, uh, President of the Nepali Folklore Society. Professors, seniors, members of the academia, distinguished members of NFS, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar, good morning. I may stand up actually here. Um, well, it really gives me a great pleasure and honor to say a few words at the third national folklore congress organized by the Nepali Folklore Society. And actually, I am very happy that I was not requested to present a scientific paper here, research paper, or to sing a song, <laughs> <laughs> which I could do, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, a few days ago, I had a very interesting and enlightening discussion with Professor Ivashi uh, and uh, Dr. Regmi uh, from Tribu One uh, University. I was very impressed to learn about the extensive research work, publications, and other activities of NFS 
on which this conference is an excellent example. In my country, Finland, the national heritage and folklore have been highly appreciated for a long time, as was actually said earlier on here. Yeah. Finland was many centuries part of our neighbors, bigger neighbors. First Sweden for 700 years. I'm not using the word colonized, but it's very close to that. And then Russia over 100 years. And during that time, little recognition was given to our national heritage and language, Finnish language or Suomi. Suomi is the, in our own language is called Suomi and the country is also Suomi, not Finland. Until the beginning of the 19th century. And at that time, collection of the rich Finnish oral folklore and mythology began resulting in publication of the first edition of the Kalevala, our national epic in 1835 by Elias Lundrud, scientist and folklorist of the time. The Kalevala was instrumental in the development of the Finnish national identity. The intensification of Finland's language strife and the growing sense of nationality that ultimately led to Finland's independence of Russia in 1917, so a bit more than 100 years ago. And the, it's still regarded that the Kalevala is one of the most significant works of Finnish literature even today. Ladies and gentlemen, much of global attention today is devoted to the importance of biodiversity. And this is, of course, important for the future of the mankind. But at the same time, we should not ignore the equally important cultural and language or linguistic diversity that is increasingly in decline and jeopardy globally. I also say this representing the language spoken by only 6 million people globally and being aware that many of the fenno ugrian languages and cultures that Finland and the Finnish language are part of are facing extinction. Nepal is extremely rich both in terms of biological diversity as well as cultural and linguistic diversity with, I think, is it more or less of 100 languages spoken in your country? I think this figure is still debated, but let's say around 100 years. This is something that Nepal can be really proud of. It is important to be aware and appreciate one's cultural heritage, identity and language. There is immense amount of accumulated local indigenous knowledge too. And all these elements should and can, can be integrated into national development processes as well. Therefore, there is a strong call for continuous folklore research and studies to increase and restore our knowledge of the national heritage here in Nepal and also in Finland and the global. I think NFS deserves sincere congratulations to facilitating such research and for organizing this wonderful event. Thank you, Hanebat Kiitos. Folklore and intangible cultural heritage of Assam and analytical study on oral tradition of Kaliaburism. The Kaliaburism actually, it's a, a trio far from Gohati. Zed. I think Gohati is a well known name for you all. Introduction about Assam. Assam is a homeland of different ethnic groups and meaning point of Aryan and Mongolian culture. Both tribal, non-tribal and plains and hills people make greater Assamese society. The inhabitants of Assam can be divided into three categories, namely the tribal population, the non-tribal population and scheduled caste. Since time immemorial, uh, uh, Assam has been the happy meeting ground of people belonging to different ethnic groups, communities, and cultural entities. Yes, this is, uh, you can see the Kamaikha Temple, the sensible, the great example of transcendental heritage of Assam. 
and in tangible varieties of Assam, the categories are orange dresser, folk custom, traditional attire, folk cookery, and performing art. This is Nova district. It's a one, a one district of Assam. And Lower it's the my study area, it's Koliabar. Koliabar is located in Naga district of Assam. It is a subdivision of Naga. The area is bounded by Bolaka district in the east, Samogori circle of the Naga district in the west, the mighty Brahmaputra river in the north, and the hill district of Karbiana in the south. Koliabar has distinct historical and cultural background. <laughs> this is one kind of example of tangible heritage of Assam architecture, sculpture, paintings, etc. gives an extra dimension. Of culture. The olden architecture and sculpture of Kaliyabar are mainly associated with Saktism. Kamaikha Temple, this is Kamaikha Devalai, this is Hatima Devalai, and this is Nrikhima a great example of architecture and structure. Uh, this is a past, uh, post harvest festival held mid of January, and uh, actually, uh, what they did on the third day of Mark Bihu, that means 14 January. Okay, study for 14 January. So, women burned a bamboo made hut which is covered by banana leaves. Uh, and it is folk believed that the burning banana and the leaves helps to grow plants, and hence they bring burnt leaves to home and they die uh, with the plants. And they, you know, that burning, etc., uh, you know, the dance like this. Like uh, Atidoya, Patidoya, Tamul Kota, Kotari, it is a, some kind of their uh, idea or a literature. It's generated from one generation to another. Oh. Okay, and uh, another is Biana. That's, uh, yes, like Bhagavati song, I can sing. Oh. Like Murat Pular Saru Loi, Bhagavati Kadaru Goi, Ahi Sebhobani. Jagat Janani Saya De Rakhi Boloi Actually the worship Goddess Bhagavati like this Okay, you can see the picture This one the, You know that uh, they believe Goddess Bhagavati is here And they, you know that like this uh, You know that the Goddess uh, um, Murat Fulor Sharulo Like uh, this lines actually they use in front of Goddess Bhagavati to please her Okay, uh, you know that They believe that it uh, removes from chicken pox and all. And this is uh, Biyanam, it is related to Mary songs and all. It's like Juru Narte Keli, Anahe Bioni, Oi Ram, Rot Narhinga Honat Tuli He. And if you don't know that meaning and all, actually, um, that uh, you know that uh, in wedding, Assamese wedding, it is available in YouTube and all. Then you can see that uh, during that wedding time, uh, you know that both bride and groom's party actually they use this kind of uh, song and all. Um, this is folk customs of Kaliyabar. You can see that Batho Puja Boro. Actually, that uh, you know different kind of actually there are ten communities, almost ten communities in Kaliyabar. Uh, it's a place of unity and different communities and tribes. Here is Assamese, Bengali, Bihari, Marwari, Nepali also, and Bengali, Boro, Karbi, and Tea Garden community are lives in different villages, hence, different folklore is associated with their livelihood. And this is uh, folk custom, Batro Puja Boro, and this is Susan Puja. Uh, Susan Puja and Grand Puja is one kind of, you know, that uh, Puja. Uh, they believe that it removes all bad habits and all from their village. And this is dance form of Boro. Performing art also it is a part of intangible heritage. And you can see the crumb. It's a folk instrument of Boro community. If it's audible then definitely it will be a, you know that great for you all. Well, and you can see the traditional craft and costumes of Kaliyabur. You can see your Nepali, you know that costumes and all. And uh, actually, during these festivals, they invited me as a sick guest over there. Okay, in my Kaliyabur uh, reason. And uh, at that time, I was very, uh, yes, I'm very grateful. Yeah, I was a part, you know that, uh, part of there. And this is that, uh, this is craft, traditional craft of Karbi tribe. And this is, you, you know it. Well, so moreover, folk customs and food, crookery and all are, you know, that still alive in, you know, that Kaliyabar region. And it is, you know, 
lots of work to do and that's why uh, this is actually one part of my thesis and my thesis is uh, on the topic the oral tradition of Kaliyavar region and that's why I you know um, I uh, present this paper it's also a part of my thesis and uh, there are folk narratives riddles and all also associated with intangible heritage like suppose um, there are no any uh, historical, uh, Kaliyapur is a historical place, um, I have already mentioned, there is historical impact on the name of different kind of places, not only places but also related to Namkhar, Devalaya, etc. Even lizards, meats are also related to Namkhar, <coughs> Devalaya and places. For example, Salara. Younger brother of Naranayana Raja of post Rajbansi <coughs> tied his boat at the bank of mighty Brahmaputra and for the places, uh, name, uh, place was famous as Silarai, Sila Mondha Gaon. Silarai, he tied a boat nearby Brahmaputra and the place name later on it's known as Sila Bondhaga. So this kind of historical impact still alive in Kaliyabar region and you can say that uh, it's just a folk narratives of Kaliyabar uh, and also that Kamala Puri Hadu is one of the most great example of folk narratives of Kaliyabar riddle proverbs um, also popular in Kaliyabar. Hymns are also part of intangible heritage. These hymns are very secret. One of the example is given below like Gana Gana, uh, Brahma Gana, uh, they actually use uh, the relief mantra from the bite of bee. 